Griffin, this is Thinking Thursday, and we are in the castle of Dr. Brain. So, we finally got this place to shut up. It was bad. So let's, let's get at it. Of course we can't get out here. A special security feature prevents the elevator doors from being opened until you punched in. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. So, you'll have to get a time card before you can punch in. There are a few in the desk drawer. Which can now open because it's quiet. Okay. This is one of Acme's famous time locks. To open it, you need to press the open button exactly 40 seconds after pressing start. You can flip either hourglass immediately after either runs out. Okay. Of course, the lock is really controlled by the hourglasses, not by time. So you have a few seconds to make each flip. But you will have to flip the hourglasses in the right order to measure out 40 seconds to open the drawer. The large hourglass will run for 25 seconds when flipped, and the small one is for 15 seconds. Spend a hint going to get some tips. So I need 40 seconds on the clock to open the drawer. All right, let's let's just look at this here. So uh, all right, so this one must run for this is the big one. Yeah, that makes sense. That's how it looks outside too. So this one runs for 25. This one runs for 15, and when either of them ends, I can flip an hourglass. And I, I get the feeling I can only flip one. And I need 40 seconds. So, wait. 25 plus 15 is 40. Okay. So, start. Uh, okay, cool. So when one of these ends, so, all right, so so when the 25 second one ends, if I flip the 15 and wait for it to be empty and then pop the open, I should have 40 seconds on on the clock essentially. So this one this one like doesn't matter until this one finishes essentially is, is how this is how this is rolling if I'm understanding correctly. No, flip. Oh, oh phew. I, I failed to notice the, the flip. Hopefully, I mean, it said I had a few seconds, so maybe I caught it in time. When I go to hit open, we'll find out. So I just need to wait for this thing to end. Finish. Come on. Finish. Oh, oh. Ah, 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 ah. I mean, suck it. All right. So, punch in. Of course, it's another. The key. And the time clock. Oh! Oh, that's it's another puzzle. Alright. The first card has previously been- Oh. What's the key do? Oh! I can- Yeah, I can click through that. Okay. So let's see here. The first card has previously been used at 112, 224, and 336. Well, Alright, they're going up in increments of- yeah, 12, 24, 36. So that would be 48 is the next one. On the on the minute side. One, two, three. So it'll be one, two, four. So that'll be two, four, six, eight. So yeah. So that should be four forty-eight to get this thing in. Ding. I win. Oh, yeah, there were three. Son of a... Alright. The second card has previously been used at 4.15, 6.30, and 8.45. Well, that one's, that one's pretty obvious. Uh, oh, oh, okay, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Except that it's going to flip over because it's going up in increments of 15. So it's going to be 11 o'clock. That too many times. Dink. Ah. Okay. Huh. The third card has previously been used at 1018, 827, and 536. 
Alright, um, start with the minutes. Uh, 1827, 36, 1827, oh, nine. Oh, nine times staples. Okay, so, 1827, 36, 45. So, the, the, Second half, I'm guessing, will be 45. 10, 8, and 5. Alright, so between 10 and 8, there is either noon or midnight. Let's, let's assume there's noon, and say, so this is 10 a.m. If it's 10 a.m., uh, alright, I'm just gonna count 10, 11... 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's 10 hours between 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. So, if it, if it, if it's, yeah, it's a time clock, so it has to be, alright, so, if it's 8 p.m., that means the next one must be 5 a.m., so 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's 9 hours between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. So if it's 5 a.m., or should 10, 9, maybe the next one's 8 if they're just going in sequence. So 8 hours past 5 a.m. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1. So that would that would put it at at 1 p.m. So so one forty-five. This one's this one's a little bit trickier. I'm 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 kind of hoping I'm. Oh, you stupid minute hand! That was not a full minute. Suck it! I didn't think that was right. I I was I was I was pretty sure on the second number, but the first number I was like, uh, crap. Okay, so cool. You're now punched in and ready for work. The back door opens. Wasn't the elevator door? Screw it. All right. Opens to reveal an elevator car. Oh, nothing about this is going to end well. Oh, well, so I just walk right in. Why not? Um, what's this? This shows your relative position within the four levels of the maze. Crap! Maze is constructed of steel planks. Pushing this button changes the map display between a three-dimensional grid and a flat map of the current level. And this will, I presume... So you might, you can't bump through the ceiling. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Um, well, I mean, there's, there's several theories of getting through a maze, but let's, let's see how ugly this one is. Alright, but that didn't actually take me anywhere, it just turned my, my facing. Okay, well, that was... Okay, so that's level two. All right. So right here is. I mean, I'm assuming I'll fall down. Oh no, I don't fall down. Okay, cool. Um. Nothing there. Yeah, I'm not hyper efficient. But... I've hit a no joy on that particular. Fun and happy time. Huh. Are there multiple ups and downs? Is that what's going on? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, there's there's multiple up and downs it looks like. That was my way in. 
Nothing in there. And I'm just kind of following the minimap at this point. So I'm, I'm guessing maybe there are multiple. Oops. Plays up and down? Yeah, yeah. There we go. So where's that put me? So level two, all right. So yeah, this was this was just a dead end sort of one, which is kind of evil. I mean, it's not like I even screwed it up. It's just uh, um. So do I think it's up or down? Let's let's say let's go this way. All right. I wonder if there's actually like a logical way to tell. Uh, I guess maybe that's the exit? Uh... Oh, interesting. Well, this puts me back on the third floor. Oh, oh, hey! Shut up. Oh, I asked you. Give you a mini map. So up here. All right. So we go down here. We have a no joy there, children. Huh. Okay. Which means this is not my way up. One of these, maybe. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, this is... This is a no joy. Yeah, alright, so... Let's go down here. Oops, that was stupid of me. And I think we went up here. We went up this one. It doesn't do well. Does this one take me down too? And where am I? I'm still. Alright, there's some maneuvering room over here. Let's see. Ha! Ah! I'm mostly just curious. Okay, so nothing over there. Yep. Maze through the north exit. Yeah, all right, cool. So I probably could have done that more efficiently, but eh, not exceptionally difficult. Oh, another corridor. Okay. This is the second floor hallway, the computer hall. Through the window, you can see a maze. There is a robot moving through the maze. It's labeled computer room. Console built into this door says robot riddles. Why, it's very nice of you to try to take out Dr. Brain's garbage, but the can is too heavy for you. I want the weapons. Um. Oh, a magnetic data card. So I guess there's an order to them? Because. What's this? Shows you've solved the clock room puzzles. All right, all right. Cool. Uh, okay, so I can open the door to this room. Alright, let's go. Okay. Circuit instructions. Form a complete circuit from the lower left to the lower right. Don't make any short circuits or duplicate connections. The power source comes first. You need to sh to slow things down before you can whirl them around. If a component is yellow, leave it until last. Banded elements must come after switches. Oh wow, this is... 
This is actually, that's a lot of rules. Okay. So I need to go from here to here. Huh, a battery, a switch, a coil, a resistor, and a capacitor. And this is essential to control them. The object is placed five components in the correct positions to complete the circuit. The instructions are on the maintenance card and the other console. If you get really stuck, insert a hint coin in the gin slot, and we'll tell you where each component goes, but you'll have more fun figuring it out for yourself. Huh. Okay. Well, I mean, circuit... Okay, so this is... This is kind of interesting. A coil, a resistor, and a capacitor. I thought I was supposed to avoid connect... Oh, yes, I am. So, if that goes there... All right, so that gives power. Um, okay, hang on. I need to check the rules again. All right. So there's a switch. Actually, I need to I need to go and All right. So there is a battery, a switch, a coil, a resistor, and a capacitor. All right. So let's see here. Form a complete circuit from the lower left to the lower right. Don't make any short circuits or duplicate connections. The power source comes first. So the battery goes first. You need to slow things down before you can whirl them around. I'm assuming the coil is what they're talking about, the whirl. So I need to slow. So I would assume, okay, so the, so the battery has to come first and then the resistor and then the coil. Cone is yellow, leave it until last. Banded elements must come after switches. So the capacitor is last because it was yellow. But all right, so th there's number six is Banded elements must come after switches. I think they're talking about the resistor there. Yeah, banded. So the resistor has to come after the switch. So I think it needs to go battery, switch, resistor, coil, capacitor. And I need to make sure they don't short circuit. So... Battery. And then switch. And then resistor, coil, and capacitor. Ha! All right. Congratulations, you have successfully assembled the central control circuit. Now you can pick up Easy Listening 107, all music all the time. Nice. Either that or you've managed to repair the binary sequencing computer. You are awarded a memento copy of the control circuit, proving that you know how to follow directions. La la la! Don't take the laundry out yet, the tape drive is still in the spin cycle. Dr. Brain built this tape drive. Tape drives, oh, for those of you who are too young to remember, tape drives, well, they're still used today, actually. They are, they are backups. Like, you can, you can make a tape drive of a lot of data. So, you can backup servers on them. Although, other things are used these days, usually. Although, tape drives are still, they're, they're still used in a way. 
It's totally obsolete, but he insisted on having an old washing machine, keeping it in the system out of a sense of history. This is a once state of the art manually motivated binary sequence computer. It's not even up to date as a tape drive, but it could use your help. Oh. All right. This is the binary sequencing computer. A decimal number is shown in the box at the left. Turn the switches on and off to form the number's binary equivalent. When you have the correct number, the bulb at the right... Oh, crap. Oh, crap. I have to remember binary. It's been a while. Um, okay. Oh, the second box shows the decimal equivalent of the number currently formed by the switches. Watch how this number changes as you push switches. It will help you get the right settings. If you get really stuck in sort of hit coin in the slot, and we will solve the next row of the conversion for you. All right. So if you never worked with binary, it's binary is zeros and ones. So like, for example, that gets you one. This should be three. And then seven, and then 15, and then 31. But if I go out and take like one from here, and one from here, actually, yeah, yeah. So that gets you 24. It's, um, okay, how do I, how do I explain binary? I mean, it's been a little while since I messed with it. Like, I did it back in school, but it was more of a thought exercise than something we'd really ever need. That's 32, 34, 35. Oh, crap. Uh, well, 36. There we go. 37. So, it, it, think of it, think of binary as, like, there's decimal. Okay? So, you, you go through 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then when you go to add 1 to 9, you add a column. Right? So, you go to 10, and then you start over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, but you hit 20. So you keep incrementing the next column. Well, the trick with binary is that it 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 only has zero and one. So every time you go up past zero and like you go one, it flips the next column, and that's why like so here's one, and then that's two, that's four. So it's 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 not. Oh, oops, too high. There we go. 32, 48, no, 40, 40, there we go. So it, it's not hard, and I'm, I'm just cheesing my way through it, honestly. I mean, there's there's actually ways to calculate it, but I'm just, I'm far too lazy for such nonsense, really. Four, yep, yeah, yeah. And then 51, uh, yeah, no, that's too high. All right, so 52, 48, 56. Oh. There we go. Yeah, so it's not hard to do. Like, when you actually start, you know what? This is less painful, especially since they're giving you the indications that's right. I'm just cheesing it, honestly. This was cheese and not actually showing you how to do binary. Uh, when it really gets ugly is, like, you'll take the columns in the right row and you can actually do math with those and that... That makes me cry a little bit, but it's, it's not hard. It's just tedious, if you wanted my honest opinion. Okay, so congratulations. You have solved the binary conversion puzzle and fixed Dr. Brain's stereo system. A magnetic data card pops out of the a slot on the console, and you pick it up for later use. Now there's this nuclear reactor. I didn't sign up for this. Um, I, s yeah, no, I'm glad I ran. Um, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to call it there. We've got one room down on like the second hallway and we just got a magnetic key card, which means that we can get into this one, but we're going to do that next time. So that's it for now. This is the gaming Griffin signing off.